the, the, there are no limits. The, the, the opportunities are extraordinary for them, and they're well-educated enough to realize it. And so the ones I meet are ambitious or energetic and are impatient with the institutional structures that typically would constrain them. Um, and so they're, they're, they're searching for opportunities and in many cases creating those opportunities when they can't find them ready-made um, in the institutional landscape of the present. What, happen, what we see here at IMD is that historically organizations, well-known organizations, successful organizations, hire great people and, um, and, and I might add go to great lengths to hire great people, pay a premium, search them out, I mean it's, it's quite an expensive process. And then they turn those great people into average performers. So um, I find that offensive. And, um, and, and my sense is that one of the things that we see today that we didn't see in the past is that the, the digital cowboy generation is less patient. They're less willing to accept that model of um, uh, premature mediocrity um, in, in terms of how they develop their own career. So, their, their inclination is to be more of a free agent mentality, even if they work for a large organization. They, they have more of a, um, um, a primary affiliation to their field rather than to their employer. I, I study innovation. That's what I do at IMD. And when we're talking about big innovation, the, 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 the teams that outperform, um, it's almost always a moment when every member of the team believes that he or she has absolute freedom to contribute every ounce of their talent. So it's, a, it's, a, it's quite an extraordinary experience because you're, you're quite fulfilled in terms of what you're giving. Um, and at the same time, senior management, different generation, senior management believes it's in complete control. So we have this contradiction, right? On the one hand, absolute freedom. On the other hand, complete control. Same team, same moment. Um, I think that's what Moth is talking about. I think what we're looking for is to simplify the context within which we'll, we allow talent to express itself and then amplify the ambitions. I get really worried when I see companies react to the complexity in the environment by simplifying too much. Because we know from evolutionary biology and a lot of other places that if you simplify, you don't adapt. You become very adapted to a particular situation, but if the situation changes, you can't adapt to it. And in order to be adaptable, to be a flexible, to take advantage of opportunities, you actually need to be complex. The challenge, though, is if you're too complex, then you implode on yourself because you spend so much time managing your complexity that you can't, so you can't manage anything else. And so the, the concepts that I'm using are simplify and amplify. You need to simplify some things and then create variation on everything else. The other way, it's the kind of more leadership principle way I'd like to talk about it is Hercules meets Buddha. Okay, we, we need Hercules. Hercules is the take control, take charge. Sim but Hercules was a very simplified, simple character. You know, when you read the Hercules myths, there was not too much complex about Hercules. Okay, and so we need to be Hercules about some things, but we also need to be Buddha. We need to be much more complex about what we ac accept in terms of variation. We need to bring our whole selves, and we need to create environments where other people bring their whole selves so that we can amplify and create variation. They grew up with the assumption that, that the world is globalized. And, and of course, they're facing all kinds of complex issues, but, and, and they know that the world is complex, uh, which, you know, my generation growing up, we had a lot more assumptions of simplicity. Um, so it may seem a little bit strange to be jealous of them, but, but they really see this, they, they take for granted interdependence, they take for granted connectedness in a way that, that for those of us older, it, it requires a mind shift. And, and I love seeing what they do with that connectedness. Uh, in Western countries, uh, uh, young people uh, uh, follow traditions that uh, have been developed uh, over time. Uh, in Russia, the young generation uh, being educated uh, uh, and uh, raised uh, uh, within the transition period. Uh, and uh, when you uh, undergo transition, uh, many things happen uh, around new things, uh, uh, new ideology, new instruments, um, uh, substituting the old ones, uh, and uh, uh, new ideas and new uh, behavior uh, are uh, um, developing uh, in a new way and people uh, have much more freedom in this situation uh, change, 
uh, changes are uh, very rapid uh, and uh, there are ups and downs, uh, but certainly uh, people have more time to think rather than to learn. Uh, and this is uh, what is really important. Uh, this is what gives more freedom to people. Europe has uh, both strengths and uh, weaknesses uh, in this regard. Uh, our strength is uh, a relatively strong educational system and uh, we have many innovative industries uh, in Europe, uh, from uh, automotives to telecoms uh, to uh, biotech, uh, nanotechnologies, uh, and of course uh, to uh, various kinds of uh, services. Uh, at the same time, uh, I think um, we have uh, much to do, of course, depending, uh, depending on the country situation, specific country situations, uh, but we have much to do in order to uh, say improve the positive reception of uh, professionals uh, or students uh, from the uh, rest of the world mm -hmm. and uh, this is something that uh, we are focusing on and uh, we want to improve uh, certainly because uh, you are right that uh, Europe uh, has to be able to attract uh, talent uh, from the rest of the world uh, a bit like uh, Silicon Valley has done and uh, the United States has uh, successfully been, been able to do. We are not at all prepared. I mean, we operate based on our own cultural heritage, which, you know, we, wherever you come from is sort of where you base your behavior. And we very fast need to learn that there's some fundamentals in how cultures engage with technology that is very different. Uh, in Northern Europe and in North America, it's all about an action-oriented culture. It's all about doing something according to a calendar. That's why a calendar is so important. In Southern Europe, the Middle East and Africa, it's about the relationships you have. And so it doesn't really matter if you're 30 minutes late. It's about how you engage with people and, and the relationships you have. In the Far East, certainly in China, and for example, for that matter of fact, also in Japan, it's about the hierarchy. It's about extending beyond you as an individual because it's about thousand of years. And so executives need to learn this. Then they need to understand that innovation doesn't necessarily just flow to the people that have. Innovation has been democratized. And so you will see innovation occur across the globe where you happen to have the right instances together, which obviously is people, is creativity, uh, is some level of money, but also uh, perhaps an approach that isn't about the most technically sophisticated, but stuff that just works. Yeah. And then I got into the high-tech world where suddenly those you work with are, it's completely voluntary. They will leave you and abandon you in a moment if they are not inspired by it. The difference between a motiva motivated and unmotivated employee is huge. So it's again a completely new world, and, and I love it. It's true that hierarchies are flattening, but it's also true that they aren't. Meaning, to orchestrate a big group of people, whether they are employed by you or not, you must employ some sort, sort of a structure and hierarchy. But with the digital cowboys, the the people who now live online, it's a different way of motivating each one of them and making sure they are listened to and heard and respected. So you need to be very active on that side. But you also can't give up the, the, f the formal organization of a group because to, to retain the ability to make decisions fast and, and uh, act very decisively, you need to have a structure in your organization. This video is brought to you by the No Fear Community.